Hi everyone, so welcome back to the Love of Coding. So in today's video, we're gonna learn Next.js. So first I'm gonna talk about what we're gonna learn from this video and what you can expect after watching this video. So what you will learn in this video, well first is how you can set up Firebase with Next.js. And second thing is you will learn how to do authentication. Uh, probably we will do with the Google science. And then we're gonna talk about how you can use the context provider from React to share the global state, primarily the old state to the entire apps. And then next we're gonna talk about how you can protect the route for public route and also the um, protected route. So which is, for example, we have a login page. After you log in, you don't want um, to go back in it. So, and also if you have like an admin page, so you will not allow the unauthenticated user to visit those routes, right? So yeah, that's all that we will learn in this video. Hope you like this one. All right, so let's get let's start coding. All right, so here I'm using VS Code, so you can use any tech that you want. And this is just a boilerplate from Create Next Apps. And right now it's just having the defaults of everything from Next. So I will remove the API right here because I'm not gonna use this one. And also I have added the one package, uh, which is Firebase. We, which we will do the setups. So, all right, so we're gonna do the setup Firebase right here into our apps. So the first thing first that you need to do, you need to go into Firebase, create a new project. And this one right here, I have just created new projects. So now I'm choosing the web, so which I will do. So right here, I'm gonna give it the name. So I'm, you can give this whatever name you want. Uh, I'm gonna give it uh, next Firebase. For the hosting, I'm probably not gonna do it. And all right, so it might take a while. All right, so right now you probably see um, this one. So which we going to copy and paste all of this one right here. So I'm gonna copy and paste and then I can uh, continue to console. If you lost this one, you can go into the projects and go to project settings and you scroll down, you, can, you could find this one right here. Okay, nice. So right now we can copy this one. So now I'm going back into we, uh, VS Code. So I'm gonna create another folder called source right here. That inside here, I'm gonna create a configs. Uh, and then I'm gonna create a file in this one. I'm gonna call it firebase.configs.js. Um, all right, so and then I'm gonna import uh, Firebase from Firebase. Uh, so I'm gonna put in my screen into the center. So uh, this is one I like to do it the most. Okay, so right now, um, the way that you import Firebase, so you can see we import Firebase. This is not a good way, but I'm gonna keep this way first. So the next thing is you can copy and paste all that the things that we have in here. So I'm gonna copy this one, and I'm gonna paste this one right here. I'm gonna change this one to con instead of wa, and then we're gonna remove the analytics. So the way that we're gonna set up analytic in Next.js is um, kind of a difference from normal React apps. So you cannot do this straight away. So for now, I'm gonna do this way. And also this also has some problem as well if you do this, but I'm gonna show you what is the problem and, and then we can show you how to fix this one as well. All right, cool. So right now everything is set up. So if we go into the apps right here, if we refresh, we probably see nothing because we did not do anything with the ones just yet. So the way that I set up the my Firebase is I did not want to export everything from here. So I want to just to um, export this file inside the global app. So it's mean like whenever we hit the app, this one is actually is already initiated. So if I go back in here, so I'm, I'm gonna import this one slash source slash config slash Firebase configs. I'm gonna give it some space. So right now, if we refresh, so right now everything is set up correctly, but if you can see right here, this is like hey, uh, Firebase trying to tell us that, hey, you're trying to import all of us, which uh, you might not use it. So why don't you just install, uh, import part of us? So they recommend us just to do like the apps right here. So what we can do is to try to change this one to apps, but you will see if I go back, I will have some issues. So what is this issues? So the reason that is like inside of a project, we have already initialized the apps once. So it's mean if we save this again, it will initialize again. So we, because we have some cache inside this one right here, 
um, the way that you probably saw this one, you could do like uh, up the server and uh, down the server and up it again, it would work. But normally it's going to be a problem. It's tedious to do that way. So um, so the way that we could do that, if we could do this one, we could check if Firebase dot apps dot length. So if it's not, so it's mean like if it's not initiate yet, so we will do it. So if it's already, so we're not going to do it, this one again. All right, great. Um, so right now, we're refreshing this one. So you can see right now, everything is gone. So even the warning as well, it's gone as well. So it means, well, yeah, we have set up sets correctly. Um, and also lastly, uh, what we're gonna do is to set up the analytics. So you can see the measurement, the measurement ID right here is for the analytics. So, so what uh, the way that we can do the analytic is we can do we can check if because the analytic is work on the Windows only, so we need to check if that if this one is run on the uh, client side. So because we're running this one, it's actually run on the server side. So we could do if the types uh, of window is not equal to it's not undefined so basically if it's not undefined and then we can do if measurements id right here if measurements id is in the firebase.config so if this uh have uh in the firebase config what we can do is this one is to do firebase um we can do import firebase slash analytics okay so right now, what I can do is I can do Firebase, uh, Firebase dot analytics. Okay, great. I think uh, everything is so far is great. Did not have any errors. So let me show you if I did try this directly without doing any checks or anything right here. So if I do this one, uh, the reason it's not crashing is because the app is not going to be initialized again because I'm doing the if else condition right here. If I up the server, uh, down the server and up it again. So this one is going to have a problem because we do not have the navigator and stuff like that at gel because of the Firebase analytic right here. So we should do, I uh, put this one back and then we going to put this one inside here. Uh, I think this one will have some of the same. It's, all right, so it's clear the issues. All right, I think that pretty much it for set up the Firebase. Um, all right, so, oh, oh, one more thing is that uh, for this one right here, you don't want to put that um, like just like this. Um, in Next.js, what you can do is to create an ENV for this one. Um, so what you can do, you can create the env file, dot env. I would do like something like this. And then I would do the, so I'm gonna copy and paste this one right here. So what you can do is you can run the snippets. So if you, uh, this snippet right here, I just made myself. Um, so because I'm gonna do this over and again for my next apps. So you can get this snippet from my extensions. So I'm gonna put this one by the time you're watching this one. So you could get this one. So this DWC snippet right here, I'll leave the link in the description as well. Or you can just type it out. It's pretty simple. Uh, you can have just the next public be specify that, okay, this ENV is going to be the public key uh, that will be readable from the browser and not from the server. And then you just specify like the, what's your name right here. So since we work Firebase, we should name it Firebase key uh, because this one is much and everything from here. So I'm going to do uh, copy and paste from this one. All right, so right now everything is done. So you can see, I just copy and paste everything from here. That's much right here. So what we're gonna do is to replace all of this ones. So what I'm gonna do, I can do the process.env. So I can do the, let's say, for the next Firebase key. So what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna do that for all of the key right here. All right, so right now my, um, all right, so right now I have changed everything from this one to use the env. So I'm gonna save both of this one. All right, so next, so what we're gonna do is to try to see if we set up this one correctly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, shut up down to my server. I'm gonna up it again. 
So right now, if I go back in here, if I refresh in this one, all right, so actually we have some error right here. Interesting. Okay, so I think it's just ha an error. I think it's, it's because of this undefined right here. So I'm, I think, I see. So this one should be go back into strings. So right now, if I shut, uh, close my servers and I open it again. So right now, if I refresh this one, so you can see right now everything is set up correctly. Nothing error happens. All right, so I think that pretty much it for the setups. All right, so see you guys in the next part for doing authentication. All right, so welcome to part two of the video. So in this part, we're going to do the authentication and then we're gonna talk about the context provided and using global states inside our next apps. So let's do that. So inside our source right here, so which I'm gonna do is to create a new folder called service. So this is how I structure my apps. So I want to separate the service, like the one that we call to the backend. So in this case, we're going to use Firebase. Let's imagine if you have like the API, you could probably put this place as well. The auth service, I'm going to call this one, auth service dot um, JS right here. All right, great. So in here, I can do the cons auth service. It's going to be equal to so this one is gonna, I'm gonna export this one as an object of the function that we are um, going to use with this one. So what we can do is we can do like say, login with Gmails or login with Googles. Uh, this is the one. And also we're gonna use the asyncs uh, for this part. Um, then we, what we can do with this one is to all right, so this is need to be an arrow function, it's my bet. Um, all right, great. So I'm going to create the provider. It's going to be equal to Firebase. So we should import this one first. So import Firebase. So we need to import Firebase apps right here. Uh, and then what we can do, you need also import Firebase slash auth. All right, great. And now you can do firebase dot auth dot. I think this one should be new. New firebase dot auth dot. Um, I think it's like Google provider. Okay, this is the one. And then what you can do next is to firebase dot auth dot sign in with pop-ups. Yeah, sign in with pop-ups, and then you will pass the provider, which is this provider. And this one is going to return us the promise of the user credential, as you can see right here. So I can do a wait from here, see now I'm using the asyncs about, and I could get the user, uh, user credential. I'm going to use call user cred. Um, also what we can do is try and catch this one. So, uh, I'm going to do try. We, we're going to try to do this one. Let's see what's have a uh, catch. Uh, we can do like just if any error happen, we can just return the error with the error dot message. And if the thing is happened, okay, and uh, on about. So what we can do for this one is we can just a user with the user cred right here. Okay, nice. So right now everything is set up. Um, I think for lastly for the off service, what we can implement more is the lockouts. So I can do lockout. It's going to be, it's the same things. I can do asyncs, um, asyncs right here. And it's going to be a, a error function as well. So for here, it's going to be a really simple. We can do firebase dot auth, um, and then dot sign out. I think, um, this one right here. Great. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this one. And then, all, then we need to export this one so we can use it. Um, great. So right now, what we can uh, go next, uh, what we can do next is to create, uh, use this one inside our components. Um, all right, let's get a new um, page. So I'm going to call this one logins .js. Uh, and this one is going to be OFC right here. It's going to be going to have one boot 
that with like Google sign in. I'll say log in with Google. I'm just gonna call this one Google's. So right now, if you go into our projects right here, and then you will go to slash logins, and then you will see the uh, login right here. So the button right here. So we're gonna click this one, and we're gonna call our service. So what I like to do is to actually gonna um, put like everything like related to auth. So I'm gonna. Well, well, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna put like everything into the auth into one hook that so that we can use it um, globally uh, anywhere in our application. So which is we're gonna put that inside the context provider. So I think we're gonna do that first, and then we will come back and to implement this one. So for that, I'm gonna create inside the source right here. Uh, I'm gonna create uh, the hooks. So for this hook is gonna be the auth. .js. I'm gonna call this one auth.js. Um, all right, so let's do that. All right, so the idea of what we're doing here is to we want to create the as a global um, context or global state so that um, the anywhere in our apps can use our auth um, property. Like so let's say for example, sign out or get information related to auth something like that. Okay, so let's do that. So well, first, I'm gonna create the auth context. So auth context um, is gonna be equal to create context. So which this one import from uh, React. So for now, I'm gonna set it to null. Uh, and then I'm gonna create the auth provider. I'm gonna call. On, I'm gonna create this one. Let's say export functions auth providers. So we can do something like this. Uh, and inside the, our auth provider, we're gonna have to store some states that we wanna share as global. So for now, uh, it's uh, our auth is gonna store the user. I'm gonna set user right here so we can use it to update the users. Um, and then we can do um, new state. Well, it's gonna be null at first. And probably we might have some errors so I can do the error and then I can set the error as well. <clears throat> Sorry. So for now, it's going to be empty as well. So next is we can export uh, the functions that related to all such as the auth uh, login with Google. So I'm going to create a function called so I'm going to cons logins with Google's. So it's going to be equal to here, and then it's going to be nasings, uh, and then I'm going to call the our auth service. Right here, dot lock in with Google's, um, which this one is gonna be after we await from this one. So we're gonna can be the structure from this one uh, from the result of this one. So it can be there's two is gonna be error or a user. All right. So and then we can set uh, both value set user right here. Uh, L is if it's null. Uh, it's right here. And also we can set the error as well. I think we can just do do like this because uh, for, from this auth from our auth service is gonna eat, return either uh, it's just one of this one, so it might be so uh, it might be undefined, it might be null something like that. But um, generally you can just do something like this. So now I'm gonna put this one null as well. I think for I'm gonna put that in empty strings. Uh, I'm gonna do if undefined, it's gonna give us an, an empty string right here. And then if this one, we're gonna be nulls. Great. So right now we have our login with Google set up correctly. We can do the uh, lockout. Yep. Uh, and then it's gonna be the same thing. It's gonna be these things right here. Um, but we can do uh, for this one is we're gonna call await our authorist dot sign now. All right, so as you can see, uh, and lock the lockout, and we want to set the user to null as well. Uh, the reason is that if you just do, yeah, it, it yeah you can set this one to null. All right, I think that pretty much it for this one, and so we're gonna return. So for this, what we're gonna return is, so we can return um. So we can return the auth 
contacts that we have in here. So we can, so this one is our provider. We can return dot auth contacts dot providers. And then we're gonna provide the values that we want to pass in here. So which is gonna be the value. So all the value is gonna be from this one. I'm gonna put this one into one variable. So cons value is gonna be equal to, let's say users error. And then we're gonna go with logins with Google and then logouts right here. And then we're gonna share this one. And also we're gonna pass this, uh, we're gonna wrap our auth provider inside uh, to the global state. So it's gonna, it's gonna have some components uh, uh, to be wrapped so that we can pass the props right here. So then we can do something like this one. All right, so I think that's pretty much it for um, this part. Oh, lastly, we need to be able to place where people can actually use this one. So what we can do is we can do export uh, defaults functions. Um, I think I'm gonna call this one use auth. Um, for this uh, function use auth, uh, what we can do is we're gonna return the use contacts. I think it's gonna be use contacts. So there's the contact is gonna be the auth contact that we have right here. So if you wanna use all of this property about, you can just call this one and then you will get the, uh, all the value that you will have in here. All right, I think that is great. So right now we're gonna use this one. So we can go into our apps. This is our global place. So we can wrap our, our components right here. So if you wrap it right here, I mean that every page inside our application will have, uh, will get the use uh, the auth provider. So what I can do, I can do the auth provider, which they're gonna auto import for me. I'm gonna cut this one, remove these things. Okay. All right, great. So right now we could be uh, we we be able to do this uh, get this one. So for now, uh, if I go back to auth, I'm gonna set the user to let's say equal to hello world, and let's try to use this one. So inside our login, so we'll, right now we can just use auth, and from this one we can destructure a bunch of things from this one. So as you can see inside our auth right here, we we return this value we can access from that. So now right now we'll get the user. All right, let's do it. And then I can just pass the H1 of this one. So let's say user. Um, so as you can see right now, we got the hello world. So which is we be able to read um, from uh, this value from here. So I'm, right now I'm gonna change this back to nulls, which we, okay. Great. Um, so right now, go back into our login. So we be able. So we should be able to get the login with Google from here. So I can copy this one, and came came here, and then I use it right here. Uh, yeah. Probably we will have this user as well. So I'm gonna do the the user dot uid. Uh, which right now currently it's my ha it's it's not gonna have. So it's gonna give us some problems. Okay, because it's null, and then you try to do dot um, uid right here. So the way we do that, we can do like this one. Okay, so I'm gonna do the on click so this, and then we can just pass this one right here. Perfect. And probably we might have some error if we got so we um for now I'm try to display the error. So um, what we can do is we can do the error. We can check if it's there. If there are any errors, we will show this one right here. So if error, we will show the error. If not, then we like if error, we will show it. And I right, that's what we do in here. All right, let's so let's see. Is it everything work correctly? All right, so now I'm gonna close this one. All right, so I'm gonna run uh, my apps from the Brave. So, so this is the place. So I'm gonna click on this one. So as you can see, it's pop ups. So it's gonna give us the error right here. All right, so you can see right here, we got the error message. So the reason that we got this one is because we not yet set up the Firebase, um, the authentication with Google yet inside our um, Firebase. So right now I'm gonna go back into the Firebase and set it up. So in here, this is my Firebase. All right, so right now you can go into the authentication part and then you get click on get started. 
Um, all right, so here is the method that you want to use. You you if you want to go with Google or um, GitHub. So I have another separate video that dedicate on doing this, so you can go and check it out as well. So right now, as you can see, our sign up with Google Wallet is disabled. We need to enable it, and we need to choose an email. So this is the email that I'm using right now. So I'm gonna click save in this one. All right, so right now, as you can see, we have uh, enabled um, our Google sign in. So we will try it again. So right now, I'm gonna refresh this one. So if I click in here, so it's gonna pop up the, the windows and all right, so I'm gonna choose this email right here. Now it's gonna redirect me back. So we do not have any errors, but um, as you can see right now, we do not have uh, the user ID, right? As you can see what we expect is the user right here. But right now, if I go open this one, um okay all right let me re try to refresh this one i think this one is probably um get from uh, my brave browsers if we go into our auth contacts contact provider we will have this one so right now let's try to do it again so it's gonna sign in i'm gonna choose with this gmails it's gonna redirect me back so all right, so as you can see right here, we have the information. So I think there's a lot in here. We got user, we got additional information. I think this is not the right info that I want. All right, so let's see why we get this info. Go back into our authorist. We got this one, and this one should return me the uh, user cred, actually. I'm not sure why it's returned me a lot of things. Uh, it's give me like additional infos, uh, which what I want is to actually uh, this one only. Yes. Mm, all right, so let's see. So it would pop up, so it's gonna return this one. So I can just do here dot user. This is what I want from uh, this user credentials. So um, I will do it again. So right now, because we did not set up with the any like user stay login yet, so we can keep doing this one. So right now you can see we have the user ID. So you can see everything related to this user, we, you can get it from here, such as their emails, their photos, uh, something like that, everything's perfect. Also, you can extract from here, let's say you want to extract some of the information and you want, um, let's say, uh, and just, you if you don't want to return all of this one but for this one it's just how to show you i'm going to keep uh, just like that all right so i think everything just set up correctly we can be able to log in uh and this one and we be able to use the context global provider um so the next thing is that we need to do is to keep the users stay locked in that is the thing because right now and also protects the route. So as you can see right now, if I refresh this one, I uh, keeps uh, telling me to go uh, click on this one to lock in, which is not nice. So what we wanted to do is to uh, let me stay lock in, and also um, this one is to protect it. This one as well because we already authenticate. All right, so let's do that. All right, so right now we're going to uh, keep the user stay locked in. So what I like to do for this one is I'm going to create another component for this one, which I'm going to put this one inside the layouts folder. So right here. So I'm going to call this one the auth state change. The auth state change. Um, I think the dot um, jsx uh, dot js. Okay, all state change dot js. So, but this one is gonna be a, just a React component. Um, that uh, for this one is we going to do is to uh, use use effects. So I think I've just returned for now. Um, we're gonna do use use effects in this case. Uh, and also we can't um, inside the use effect right here. We can call the Firebase. So I'm going to import Firebase, import 
by base so which we want to only the apps only and then we're gonna do fire uh, import firebase slash auth okay so we're gonna do firebase dot auth right here dot auth state chains on auth state chain so for the on auth state chain it's going to return us the user right here So we can save the user. So I'm gonna create a state for this one. Cons. Uh, actually, we we not trying to use the state right here. So what we can do is we try to use the auth, use auth, and then we can call the set user and then call right here. So from the use auth right here, I can pass the uh set user come from here. So currently we do not pass it just yet. I can pass the set user as well. Um, set user and right now we can set this user we can call set user with the while uh, with the user that we have in here which is nice so because this is the firebase user um, and also we're gonna have to do some loading as well so I'm gonna create the states right now it's loading and then we're gonna do sets loadings it's gonna be equal to use state and it's going to be true for our loadings. Great. So, and then in here, we can check if it's loading. We're going to um, uh, return each one's loadings. Else, we're going to return something right here. And also for our all states, if, because this is a layout, we will have the children's um, in here. So I'm going to pass the children's. And now we can just return the children's uh, like this. Okay, nice. Um, so right now we do have our children's right here. Um, and then we can uh, return the loadings. We will set the loading to false after this one. So to start with the loading. So as, right now, as you can see, we have uh, something right here. You can either pass the set user, but I think uh, for this case, we can just ignore this one. Uh, the reason is that I don't want to rerun this one again. So right now, if you pass the set user right here, so it's mean like uh, we, um, so anything happens to this user, it's gonna rerun this one. So I don't want to do that. So I want to, I think uh, for to make these things, I'm gonna do, uh, ESLint disable this one. So I can do ESLint disable next line. Okay, cool. So this one is not gonna give us any warning. The reason that I do this one is if I don't do this and I keep it the problem right here, when I build, it's gonna have some issues. Great. So right now everything is set up correctly. If right now, if I go into the, we're going to use this one inside our page, our apps. I'm going to wrap this one, the auth state chains. Okay. Right here. So it's need to be underneath the auth provider. The reason is because inside our auth state chain, we use the use auth. So that's why we need to put it uh, uh, under this auth provider. So right now, if we go back into our apps, um, and then we, we should be able to see, as you can see, we we have a bit some loading and then we will get the user ID, which is great. So it means everything users stay locked in. Nice. But uh, what we want, what we don't want is that we, after we log in, we still see the, uh, after we log in, we should not be here. We should redirect us to the homepage, right? Uh, and all right, so which we're gonna do next. So we're gonna protect this one. We not allow the authenticate user to go back unless they clicks on lockout. All right, so let's do that. All right, so in this part, what we're gonna do is we're gonna protect this our login page. So after we log in, we don't want to come back here. So for this one is we um, going to create another hooks. So I'm gonna create the hooks right here, gonna call routes.js. Uh, and for this one is going to be really simple. So I'm gonna do the export uh, OFC right here. So which is this gonna be called with um, public. So with this one, I'm gonna create the, we're gonna protect with the public route first. So I'm gonna call the login as public route. Um, 
So inside here, you're not gonna return like this. And also I'm gonna not gonna do default, which I will do another one, which is gonna be the export uh, with protected uh, bit, uh, protected. Okay, so what we're gonna return in here, so for now I'm gonna uncomment this one, we're gonna focus on this one first. Um, for now, what we can return in here, we're gonna return the functions, and then we kind of call this one with public. So which is, this one is, a, uh, this is a component, this is the function, and this is the uh, React component, which uh, we're gonna return this one. Uh, and for this one, we're gonna use the auth, right? Uh, use auth, our hooks use auth, and then we will have the uh, auth right here. The everything that come from the use auth. So as you can see, our auth is gonna be uh, all of this one. So right now, I'm gonna return all of this one inside here, and then right here, I'm I'm gonna do I'm gonna check this one. I'm gonna check if the auth dot users if it's if it have so it mean like so because since we authenticate so it mean like the auth user is gonna be exist right so we're gonna check okay hey if the the auth user exists so it mean like if we have a user so it, you should not be here you should redirect to somewhere else so which we're gonna do is to router so we're gonna use use router cont router equal to use uh, I think use router right here, not this one. It should import from here. Use router, and then we can do router dot push, or we can use the replace as well. Use router dot replace to where do you want to go? So for now, let's say after we log in, we should ret uh, we return to some page. So I'm gonna go into home page, uh, and so this one is not gonna happen immediately. So the reason, let's say, for example, let's say if I return some things below it, it will return something this first and then it will uh, run this one. So so what we don't want is we don't want to run the components below it. So so for that, I can return from here. I return another loadings, h1 dot, dot loading. And you may ask, what are we going to return, right? So we are going to return the components that uh, we are going to wrap this one. So it's gonna be, um, I'm gonna call this component. So, and then we can just render the component right here. So what is this component? So right now, uh, after we doing this one, I will wrap this, uh, I will use this one to wrap around the page that I want to protect it. And then, so as you can see right here, I can use the auth right here. But since we're doing this one, I can pass the auth from here directly. So it would be nice. So inside a page that will wrap with this one, they don't have to call this anymore. They can just use this one right uh, from the props. And we need to add additional props. So if we're doing like this, if you have another props that wraps around the width public, it will not happen. So for that, we can do with uh, add the props and then we can spread right here. Okay, it's nice. Um, also, so right now we're gonna use this one and then we will come back for, with the protected uh, route. So right now with public is everything okay. We're gonna go into login. We're gonna use this one. So instead of this one uh, with default, I'm gonna export it down below. So it's gonna be a little bit different. So export with public and then we can use our login right here. Perfect, just like this one. And so as you can see right now, we since with public, we have the auth. So if I go to the route right here, we pass the auth as a prop to the component that it wraps. So then you can use this auth right here uh, from this one. So you don't have to call use auth. So what you can do is you can destructure the auth and then you can just the auth right here. Or you can call it use auth if you want, but I'm gonna call this one auth and we can get everything from here and everything is will work just fine. And I'm going to remove this one. Right now, if we go back in here, so it has some a bit some loading, so as you can see. So right now, if I try to go into the login page, um, so as you can see, it, it's, it's gonna have some a little bit of loading and it's going to redirect me here. So the, so the, the loading here is important. 
So right now, if I let me let me try if I do not return the loading right here, and then I come back here, I'm gonna do lock-ins. So you can see it, uh, it's a flicks moment. You will see the uh, component. So that's why we need to pass the loading right here. Perfect. So there you go. So right now you'll be able to protect this one, and we're gonna do the same things with the our uh, well, with protected. So we're gonna do right here uh, with the return. I'm gonna just copy and paste this one. Uh, we need to change the names. Instead, we're gonna do width right here. Uh, for this one, uh, let's say we're gonna go back and return back to the login page. Uh, this one. Uh, if like say if it's not authenticated, so let mean like let's say if you go have an admin page and your admin, if someone go to your admin page and we check that, okay. The user is null, so we're gonna return you to the lock uh, to, to the login to let you lock in, and then everything is gonna be the same thing. So we pass everything from here. Okay, perfect. So right now, I'm gonna go in, into the page. Uh, I'm gonna create another page called admin.js, and I'm gonna do OFC, basically the same things. Uh, inside here, I can do create a button. I will do the lock out from here. Uh, lock out, which we will not do it yet. So, and then I will do the export default with uh, protected, and then I can pass the admin right here. So, as there's a good thing, you need to put uh, the application for the uh, components. Okay, so right now everything is, should be good to go. So, um, and Okay, so right now if I go slash admin, I, okay, we have some problem because a component is not defined. Okay, let's see what's the error. Oh, I see, because I do not pass the component from here. So, all right, let's refresh this one. We have some loading and then we, we see the components uh, lock out. So I think, where is it? Okay, here. So right now we need to implement this lockout to see if it works correctly or not. So we'll go back to admin. So once again, we can destructure the auth from here. And from the auth, we can destructure this again. So it's gonna be auth and then we can do lockout. And then we can do the on click of this one. And then we can do lockout right here. Perfect. So right now, if I click in here, so you can see uh, it's gonna return me to the sign-in page. So right now, if I would try to go back into the admins, it's not gonna let me in. So it's gonna re redirect me to the login page. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it on how you can protect it, uh, protect your route. So, um, so as you can see right here, we have one page that this page is not gonna be protected from any authentication. So let's say imagine if you have uh, apps where there's some route that you want to protect it, there's some route that you don't want to, this is how you do it. So you, you don't have to do anything with uh, the page that you don't want to protect it. But if you want to protect it, you can just uh, export it with public, either it's with public route or either with the protected route. Yeah, I think that pretty much it for this video. Um, let me know in the comment if I made any mistakes or or yeah or anything. All right, so thank you guys for watching until the end. Hope you have a great day and hope you learn something new from this one. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, see you guys in the next video. Peace.